This is Mission Control Houston. Good morning. Thank you for joining us today for coverage of the International Space Station Flight Control Room awaiting the installation of the Cygnus cargo vehicle to the International Space Station. Today is Sunday, October 23rd, 2016. Taking over for the Orbit 2 uh, team, leading the teams here today, Flight Director Judd Freeling and the back there, uh, Capcom Mike Jensen. Taking over from the Orbit 1 team that was in charge of the capture of the Cygnus cargo vehicle, uh, Flight Director Gary Horlocker and Capcom Rebecca Wingfield. This week has been quite a busy week with uh, lots of space traffic Traffic um, starting on Monday, October 17th at 6.45 p.m. Central Time on top of Orbital ATK's upgraded Antares 230 rocket uh, launching from the Mid-Atlantic Regional Spaceport, or MARS, at NASA's Wallops Flight Facility in Virginia. Uh, Orbital ATK launched the Cygnus cargo vehicle again at 6.45 p.m. Central Time, Monday, October 17th in orbit uh, just about two hours later um, solar arrays deployed and uh, Cygnus began its five-day journey uh, to rendezvous with the International Space Station. This is a bit longer than normal and this was to make room for the uh, 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 launch and docking of the Soyuz with three new crew members to add to the Expedition 49 uh, to dock to the station. After a five-day rendezvous, the Cygnus cargo vehicle was captured this morning at uh, 6.28 a.m. Central Time, 250 miles above Kyrgyzstan. Now carrying two and a half tons of food, supplies, and experiments to the station, uh, the robotic arm is now maneuvering it into its berthing position in the nadir port of the Unity module around the center of the International Space Station. As mentioned, from the 6.45 p.m. launch on October 17th, the uh, orbital ATK Cygnus cargo vehicle made a five-day rendezvous to the International Space Station to make room for the Soyuz crew that launched on uh, Wednesday, October 19th at 3.05 a.m. Central Time. New Expedition 49 crew members Shane Kimbrough, Sergei Rizikov, and Andrei Borensenko lifted off from the Baikonur Cosmodrome at 3.05 a.m. Central Time Wednesday, October 19th. They had a nominal two-day rendezvous with the new uh, MSO-2 Soyuz spacecraft. They docked to the International Space Station at 4.52 a.m. Central Time on Friday, October 21st. Hatches were opened uh, just over two hours later at 7.20 a.m. Central Time. Three crew members, Kimbro, Rizikov, and Borinsenko, joined their Expedition 49 crewmates, uh, Kate Rubens, Takuya Onishi, and Anatoly Ivanishin, that you can see here in the PRS docking compartment, uh, awaiting their arrival on Friday, October 21st. Lots of space traffic all coming to a close here with the capture of the Cygnus cargo vehicle again. That was captured this morning at 6.28 a.m. Central Time, 250 miles above Kyrgyzstan, now awaiting for the berthing of, uh, to the common berthing mechanism at the Nader port of Unity.
You're getting a live look at the inside of the International Space Station Flight Control Room at the NASA Johnson Space Center here in Houston, Texas. Flight controllers here are uh, waiting to regain video communications from the International Space Station, estimated uh, around 8.20 a.m. Central Time. Meanwhile, ground controllers are still positioning the Cygnus cargo vehicle to the its berthing uh, port at the nadir port of uh, the Unity module, using the station's robotic arm to get it into position. Uberl ATK's OA-5 mission, the Cygnus cargo vehicle, is named after uh, Alan Poindexter, uh, the cargo craft being called SS Alan Poindexter. Poindexter is a veteran of two space flights, uh, one on STS-122 aboard Atlantis, uh, launched on February 7th, uh, and the mission extended to February 20th, uh, 2008. That mission was to deliver the European Space Agency's Columbus module to the International Space Station. Poindexter's second flight was on STS-131 aboard Discovery, launched April 5th, and extended the mission to April 20th, 2010. That was to deliver about 13,000 pounds of cargo and supplies to the International Space Station on one of its resupply trips, one of the final resupply trips to the International Space Station, uh, among which included the uh, new crew quarters that the uh, crew members aboard the International Space Station still sleep in today. Poindexter passed in uh, 2012, and this, uh, cargo, this cargo vehicle is uh, named after him. Within the cargo vehicle is two and a half tons of food, uh, supplies, and new experiments. Some of the experiments aboard, one of which is Sapphire 2. This is the second in a series of three Sapphire, uh, in a, ser a series of three that tests how fires burn in space uh, using different materials. The first spacecraft fire test, the Sapphire experiment, uh, tested one large sample, a one foot by three foot blend of cotton and fiberglass. Uh, for Sapphire 2, the one that's on the OA5 uh, Cygnus cargo vehicle right now, this one will test about nine different materials, each a smaller sample size, about two inches by 10 inches, or uh, 5 centimeters by 25 centimeters. For the Sapphire 2 experiment, uh, this won't occur until the Cygnus has been released from the International Space Station, now scheduled to be released on uh, November 18th of this year, and is a safe distance away from the International Space Station. Then the experiment will begin, and data will be downlinked before the Cygnus's destructive re-entry into the Earth's atmosphere. Another experiment aboard is the uh, Cool Flames experiment. It's exactly what it sounds like, observing low temperature combustion of droplets of various fuels and additives in microgravity. In previous combustion experiments that have been performed in the past on the ISS, researchers obser observed uh, cool flames burning behaviors um, not predicted by models or earlier investigations. Studies done on the ISS show that flames uh, went out not once, but twice. Uh, went out once with a visible flame and another with an invisible flame. Cool flames burn at about 600 degrees Celsius, or, or 1,100 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, to give you some, some perspective, a typical candle burns at uh, two and a half times that, at uh, 1,400 degrees Celsius, or just over 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit. The Cool Flames uh, payload now includes a new camera system designed to look at these invisible flames that burn at 600 degrees Celsius. They'll be mounted in the combustion integration rack, a uh, current payload aboard the International Space Station. Also aboard Cygnus is an experiment called Lighting Effects. This is an experiment to test how different types of light may affect circadian rhythm or the quality of an astronaut's sleep. The system uses adjustable LEDs that vary in intensity and spectrum to increase alertness when awake and improve the quality of sleep. Lighting manipulation has the potential to be an effective non-pharmacological way of to optimize sleep in space and also can improve the quality of sleep for people on Earth that, say, worked night shifts.
Also on board is a new experiment called Everywhere. Uh, that's where as in W-E-A-R. This experiment will test a faster and more efficient way to collect personal data using a tablet app. This French-designed experiment collects and transmits data on nutrition, sleep, exercise, and medication intake. The app will have astronauts fill out questionnaires and keep medical and clinical logs. Uh, there's also other equipment. During exercise, astronauts will wear a smart shirt that records heart activity and body position to transmit to the app, and also wear a fingertip device that transmits pulse and blood pressure. Here's an image of uh, Tomas Pasquet, a European space Space Agency astronaut uh, launching next to the ISS in mid-November with uh, NASA astronaut Peggy Whitson and cosmonaut Oleg Novitsky for Expedition 50 and 51. Right now you're seeing a sensor patch on the forearm that records skin temperature and uh, activity levels to assess sleep quality. There's also nutritional information from the food uh, that can be transmitted to the app by scanning the barcodes on the food packets. Again, that uh, experiment will begin once the Expedition 5051 crew launches to the inter uh, International Space Station, now scheduled for mid-November. Another experiment on board Cygnus right now uh, has to do with radiation. It's called the Fast Neutron Spectrometer. and studies the radiation environment of the ISS by looking at high-energy neutrons Outside the magnetic field of the Earth, astronauts are exposed to space radiation that can reduce immune response, increase risk of cancer, and interfere with electronics. The Fast Neutron Spectrometer, or FNS, will use a new technique to measure these neutrons. Uh, neutrons typically pass through measuring systems undetected, but the FNS will use a sort of gate and capture technique that slows them down in a special glass fibers uh, that are loaded with lithium. This method produces a flash of light when the neutrons strike it, which the FNS will be able to analyze and determine the radiation level. This equipment specifically reacts to neutrons uh, and improves the accuracy of these measurements. Understanding the radiation environment, uh, especially on the International Space Station that's under some protection of the Earth's magnetic sphere, is vital for when astronauts travel beyond low Earth orbit, uh, such as on the journey to Mars. Again, the Cygnus cargo vehicle for orbital ATK's OA-5 mission was captured at 6.28 a.m. Central Time this morning, uh, 250 miles above Kyrgyzstan. Flight controllers here in the International Space Station flight control and are still awaiting re um, video communications to be regained in uh, just about six minutes. As we wait to regain uh, video communications from the International Space Station that will show the current position of uh, the Cygnus cargo vehicle oriented to berth to the Nader port of Unity, uh, that's the Earth-facing side of the Unity module aboard the International Space Station. 
The space station is currently flying at 251 statute miles, uh, just south of Sri Lanka, now entering an orbital night. Once the Cygnus cargo vehicle is berthed uh, to the Nader point, port of uh, Unity, uh, it is expected to remain there until uh, currently November 18th. After that, it will uh, depart the International Space Station and uh, move a safe distance away to conduct the Sapphire 2 experiment, the uh, spacecraft Fire 2, and ignite the nine samples that are aboard the Cygnus cargo vehicle for that experiment. Uh, that'll be before its destructive re-entry into the Earth's atmosphere, carrying about 3,000 pounds of trash. of the many experiments that I mentioned that are aboard the Cygnus cargo vehicle. Uh, right now, the astronauts are scheduled to ingress the vehicle uh, Thursday morning. There are no time-critical experiments that are on board Cygnus, and they are allowed to wait until Thursday morning, but the astronauts may work with the ground controllers here to ingress just a bit earlier. Station Houston on two for uh, Cupola RWS and Cygnus status. Hey, with you. Hey, Kate, uh, just wanted to give you a heads up first that we're uh, about to start pressing in towards RTLs. Looks like it'll be uh, between five and ten minutes, hopefully, uh, if everything is holding on track. The other item for you is just uh, we've been seeing some sporadic inputs on both of the Cupola RWS hand controllers. Uh, if someone has a moment to go uh, glance and make sure nothing's uh, bouncing up against them, that would uh, be appreciated. Yeah, I'll check, and uh, we're used to the RWS being off, so we'll make sure that uh, we're not anywhere near that in the Cupola. And Kate, uh, copy all. Uh, the the inputs are no impact to the current robo ops. Uh, the only concern is making sure nothing gets pressed on the DCP. Copy, and we will uh, double check that and keep that all clear. Thank you very much. That was NASA astronaut uh, Kate Rubens, currently aboard the International Space Station. Her and uh, fellow crewmate Takuya Onishi used the station's robotic arm to capture the uh, Cygnus cargo vehicle early this morning at 6.28 a.m. Central Time. You're getting a live look at the inside of the International Space Station Flight Control Room at the NASA Johnson Space Center here in Houston, Texas. Uh, we have just regained uh, video communications uh, with the International Space Station as it flies uh, 253 statute miles, uh, just a little bit west off the coast of uh, Australia. 
uh, just entering in orbital nighttime. You can see some of the lights from the International Space Station illuminating some parts of uh, the Cygnus cargo vehicle as it is oriented for uh, berthing to the Unity module, the Nader uh, port of Unity module. This is the Earth-facing side. Uh, Robo reports that uh, the berthing of Cygnus to the International Space Station is on schedule, if not a little bit ahead of schedule, and we'll make sure to keep you updated as we uh, as time goes along. Reports from the robotics officer here in the uh, International Space Station Flight Control Room. The station's robotic arm is now in motion uh, on its way closer and closer to the common berthing mechanism at the Nader port of Unity, uh, about to position itself just about 100 centimeters away from the common berthing mechanism uh, to align itself before berthing. You can see this nighttime view of the Cygnus cargo vehicles, uh, the Ultraflex solar arrays sticking out at the top left and bottom left of, uh, of your screen there, uh, approaching the common berthing mechanism with that red, faint red light to the right of your screen. The end of the station's robotic arm is there to the left of your screen.
The uh, station's robotic arm has successfully maneuvered the Cygnus cargo vehicle 100 centimeters away from the common berthing net mechanism, now moving again slightly closer to about the 40 centimeter mark. Ground controllers continue to maneuver the Cygnus cargo vehicle into position in front of the common berthing mechanism. Uh, the view that you're getting here from the from the camera is from the common berthing mechanism uh, as the Cygnus vehicle approaches the 40 centimeter mark. Still uh, on on track to uh, berth uh, on schedule, if not ahead of schedule. We're expected to maintain a constant feed of uh, video communications for at least the next 12 or so minutes. Just over uh, two hours since uh, confirmed capture of the Cygnus cargo vehicle at 6.28 a.m. Central Time this morning. Everything on track uh, for berthing, uh, nominal berthing, um, later this morning.
the International Space Station is currently flying uh, 260 uh, statute miles uh, above the Earth, just south of the border of uh, Australia and Tasmania. Sunrise is uh, expected in just about 10 or so minutes. Uh, we'll have good video communication until then. Uh, there's going to be a short handover with satellite communication, and we should regain it uh, video communication within 5 to 10 minutes. Confirmation from the robotics officer that the Cygnus cargo vehicle has reached the 40 centimeter mark away from the common berthing mechanism at the Nader port of uh, Unity, where the Cygnus will remain until November 18th. Still on track for a nominal berthing of the Cygnus cargo vehicle to the International Space Station.
a good view of the station's uh, from the station of the Cygnus cargo vehicle, you can see the station's robotic arm at the left of your screen and the Ultraflex solar arrays coming out from the Cygnus cargo vehicle at the top left and bottom left of your screen, uh, approaching the common berthing mechanism 40 centimeters meters away at the right of your screen. We're expecting a short handover in video communications in uh, just about five minutes. Uh, that'll be about a six to eight minute gap until we regain communications. By the time we do, uh, the station should be entering an orbital sunrise. The station now at uh, just over 260 statute miles uh, above the Earth, uh, just south of the border of New Zealand. The Cygnus cargo vehicle is starting to brighten up just a bit as we enter an orbital sunrise. Uh, we're expecting to lose uh, video communications in the next few minutes here, and uh, robotics officers will continue to resume uh, the berthing of Cygnus cargo vehicle to the International Space Station once communications are resumed in about six to eight minutes after um, loss of communications uh, within the next one, one to two minutes. You're getting a look at the inside of the International Space Station Flight Control Room at the Johnson Space Center here in Houston, Texas, uh, where the Orbit 2 team is monitoring the uh, berthing of the Cygnus cargo vehicle to the International Space Station. Gr flight controllers here are led by uh, are led by Flight Director Judd Freeling, and the Capcom today is uh, Mike Jensen.
Robotics officers continued to hold the Cygnus cargo vehicle a few centimeters away from the common berthing mechanism at the Nader Point port of uh, Unity on the International Space Station. A lot of uh, dynamic space uh, activity going on in space over the past week. It began with the launch of the Cygnus cargo vehicle on top of Orbital ATK's upgraded Antares 230 rocket uh, on Monday, October 17th at 6.45 p.m. from NASA's Wallops Flight Facility. After launch on Monday night, uh, it began a f five and some change uh, day rendezvous uh, to begin uh, its capture this morning, uh, where it was captured at 6.28 a.m. Central Time. This long rendezvous was to make room for the uh, Soyuz launch and docking. Uh, launch occurred at 3.05 a.m. Central Time on Wednesday, October 19th, and docked to the International Space Station at 4.52 a.m. Central Time on Friday, October 21st. The hatches were opened uh, at 7.20 a.m. Central Time. Now there's three uh, new crew members aboard the International Space Station to complete Expedition uh, 49. Uh, six crew members in total. The new crew members, uh, Shane Kimbrough, Sergei Rizikov, and Andrei Borisenko, uh, now aboard the International Space Station for uh, just about five days. Sorry, uh, aboard the International Space Station for two days. They're joined by uh, Expedition 49 crew members Kate Rubens, Takuya Onishi, and Anatoly Ivanishin. Kate Rubens and Takuya Onishi were busy this morning in the station's cupola, uh, the cupola robotic workstation, where they used the station's robotic arm to capture the Cygnus cargo vehicle at 6.28 a.m. Central Time. Now regaining video communications back from the International Space Station, awaiting the next moves for the robotics officers to continue with the berthing of Cygnus cargo vehicle to the International Space Station. The International Space Station is now 260 statute miles uh, above the Earth, uh, just over the South Pacific Ocean, uh, just about to enter orbital daytime. Still handing over uh, video communications to maintain uh, steady video communications to uh, resume the berthing of Cygnus cargo vehicle to the International Space Station.
Video communications resumed, uh, the outer surface of the Cygnus cargo vehicle illuminating as the station passes uh, 259 statute miles over the Earth into uh, orbital daytime, just over the South Pacific Ocean. Two and a half tons of food supplies and experiments aboard the Cygnus cargo vehicle as it uh, continues to um, begin its uh, birthing sequence to the International Space Station. Astronauts are scheduled to uh, ingress Cygnus for the first time on Thursday. Uh, no time critical experiments on board this time, uh, but astronauts may continue to work with flight controllers to uh, possibly ingress early.
robotics officers uh, continue through the steps of uh, finalizing the berthing of the Cygnus cargo vehicle to the International Space Station. The station currently flying 254 statute miles uh, in the central Pacific Ocean, uh, slowly approaching the west coast of uh, uh, Central America. A short handover in uh, video communications as we switch satellite feeds to provide uh, constant video of the berthing of the Cygnus cargo vehicle to the International Space Station. Flight controllers continue to work through the steps to berth uh, the visiting vehicle to the Nader port of the Unity module on the International Space Station. Flight controllers here in the International Space Station Flight Control Room at the NASA Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas, uh, continue to monitor the systems aboard the International Space Station and ensure the uh, safe berthing of the Cygnus cargo vehicle to the Nader port of the Unity module on the International Space Station.
just over two and a half hours since uh, capturing the Cygnus cargo vehicle using the station's robotic arm. Uh, capture was at 6.28 a.m. Central Time this morning. Uh, NASA astronaut Kate Rubens and JAXA astronaut um, Takuyo Onishi used the station's robotic arm to capture the Cygnus cargo vehicle at 6.28 a.m. Central Time this morning. Uh, that was just about two and a half hours ago uh, this morning. The station is now flying 250 statue miles above the Earth, about to approach the uh, west coast of uh, Mexico. And the Cygnus cargo vehicle is holding its position uh, very close, a few centimeters away from the uh, common berthing mechanism at the nadir port of, of uh, the Unity module, the Earth-facing side of uh, the node that's at about the center of the International Space Station. Inside is about two and a half tons of food supplies and experiments. Ground Control is working to put the Cygnus cargo vehicle in standby mode uh, before berthing the uh, visiting vehicle to the International Space Station. This is a nominal procedure has been done in uh, prior missions of visiting vehicles to the International Space Station. The International Space Station, uh, just 250 statute miles above the Earth, uh, passing over the western border of Cuba and slowly approaching uh, Florida. Just about 40 minutes left of uh, sunlight before we enter an orbital sunset.
Robo working through some steps uh, to configure the station's robotic arm, again continuing operations for berthing the Cygnus cargo vehicle to the ISS. Uh, we're just entering a uh, short handover of video communications. This is expected to last about uh, six to seven minutes, and uh, the Robo will continue um, operations uh, to berth the Cygnus cargo vehicle to the ISS after regaining video communications. Station Houston on two for Cigna status. Go ahead on two. Hey, uh, just giving you all a heads up where we are on the procedures. We're still in uh, 4.235, which is the uh, Cygnus install procedure. We're running just a little bit behind. Uh, we did not catch all four RTLs. Uh, on the first pass, and we're having to work around the KU band coverage. Uh, we are estimating we're about uh, 20 minutes down on the plane at the moment, but there is some pad uh, in the uh, activities we have coming up, so we may be able to make up some of that delta. Thank you all. Thanks for the update. And uh, Station Houston, uh, just a reminder, since we are still in the uh, not yet bolted config, uh, the no exercise constraint ban will uh, remain in effect. Copy. We will make sure that nobody is going to exercise. Thank you. Flight controllers here at uh, the Johnson Space Center, uh, the International Space Station Flight Control Room, uh, waiting to regain uh, video communications coming up now, um, but consistently within the next uh, few minutes. Robotics officers are working through uh, the steps to make sure that all the ready-to-latch indications are uh, greenlit and ready to continue berthing the Cygnus cargo vehicle to the common berthing mechanism that's located on the uh, Nader port of the Unity module on the International Space Station. Once uh, consistent uh, video coverage resumes uh, in the next uh, two or three minutes, uh, robotics officers will continue to work through those problems.
the International Space Station, uh, just over 250 statute miles over the Earth, uh, just south of the border of uh, Nova Scotia. Still about 30 minutes left of daylight, uh, now entering the um, uh, one last stretch of good uh, video communications with the International Space Station. The um, Cygnus cargo vehicle uh, still in position, ready to berth to the uh, Nader port of Unity on the International Space Station. Flight controllers uh, continuing to monitor the systems of Cygnus and the International Space Station. Make sure all the ready-to-latch indicators are greenlit and ready to go to continue the berthing of Cygnus to the International Space Station. Once it's berthed, there will be uh, four gangs of four bolts. That's uh, 16 bolts in total that will uh, officially capture the Cygnus uh, cargo vehicle and uh, mark the official berthing of the visiting vehicle to the International Space Station. Once it's berthed, the uh, astronauts aboard are scheduled to enter uh, to see some of the two and a half tons of food supplies and experiments that are aboard the Cygnus cargo vehicle. That's expected to be uh, Thursday of this week. However, they may work with flight controllers here in Houston to uh, see if they can enter just a bit early. Station Houston on two for Shane, uh, your PMC standing by on four. Thanks, be there in a few.
Station on Safety Ground 2, battery change-out check-out for all four crew quarters was nominal. Copy, nominal. While flight controllers uh, work through uh, berthing the Cygnus cargo vehicle to the International Space Station, astronauts aboard uh, continue with their uh, nominal work. Um, nothing too major, it being a, uh, a Sunday. But Kate Rubin's uh, just finishing a battery R&R, &R, uh, remove and replace procedure for the crew quarters uh, that's located in the Harmony module of the International Space Station. Meanwhile, uh, Shane Kimbrough, who's been on the International Space Station now for two days, WSCA Phil can uh, be back on our timeline today if you'd like. We have 1129 from the Russian segment uh, installed in the bracket in node 3. And Kate, uh, just want to confirm uh, the number is 1192? Yeah, sorry, I was doing that from memory. Sorry about that. No worries, and uh, we'll absolutely take it. Okay, and just let us know when you're ready for it, and uh, Shane and I will get together and do a handover on that. And uh, Kate, we are go for it at any time, 71%, uh, 71. Percent, seven one. Copy, 71% and go anytime. thank you. The International Space Station now flying uh, 251 statute miles uh, just above Ireland. Uh, Cygnus still in position, uh, ready for berthing to the International Space Station, um, the uh, nadir port of the Unity module. You were just hearing uh, communications with NASA astronaut Kate Rubens aboard the International Space Station now. She uh, just finished up performing a battery remove and replace for some of the crew quarters aboard uh, this afternoon. She's scheduled to perform a series of leak checks for the Cygnus cargo vehicle.
robotics officers uh, working through to finalize the positioning of berthing the Cygnus cargo vehicle to the International Space Station. Uh, of the four uh, ready-to-latch indicators, three are greenlit and ready to go. Uh, Robo is working through some uh, operations to uh, and maneuvers to try to get that fourth one greenlit, and then they will resume berthing. Uh, three of the four um, ready-to-latch indicators uh, are, re are ready to complete the uh, berthing of the Cygnus to the International Space Station. Robotics officers still trying to uh, do a couple maneuvers to get that fourth one green-lit and ready for berthing. Flight controllers are looking for uh, good video communications during the berthing process. Uh, there's only a few minutes left of this video coverage. The next uh, long stretch of video coverage was set to resume at about 10:15 uh, a.m. central time
the International Space Station, uh, just under 250 statute miles above uh, Saudi Arabia right now, just about to enter an orbital night. Uh, as it does enter an orbital night, we are uh, losing um, video communications with the International Space Station. Uh, that is expected to resume in just over 30 minutes uh, from now. Robotics officers need... Uh, only three of the four ready-to-latch indicators were actually operational b right before the uh, end of that uh, stretch of video coverage that we had. There's a constraint to make sure that all four are safe and ready to go before beginning birthing. Uh, just to be safe, the robotics officers will resume the birthing process at 10.15 uh, a.m. Central Time when we are expected to regain video communications. In the meantime, uh, robotics officers will continue to troubleshoot the issues of uh, the ready-to-latch indicators. And uh, once 10.15 comes around and video communications resume, um, the birthing process will also uh, continue to resume and finalize the Cygnus uh, cargo vehicle birthing to the International Space Station. You're getting a live look at the inside of the International Space Station Flight Control Room at the NASA Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas.
station Houston on two for Cygnus. We have four RTLs and are proceeding into CBM first stage capture. Copy, that is great news and uh, we'll keep watching here. Thank you. And uh, Kate, as soon as we get the bolts uh, dialed down enough to uh, relieve the exercise constraints, I'll give you a call. Okay, thank you very much. Appreciate it. And uh, Kate, I've got a get ahead for you if you uh, are ready to copy. And ready to copy. And uh, Kate, uh, just looking ahead to try and get us uh, closer to back on the timeline, you do have the uh, Cygnus Node 1 leak check activity coming up uh, in about an hour and some change on your timeline. You are clear through step 4.3 4 .3 in that procedure. Uh, and just noting that uh, the stowage note for that does have you uh, removing an expired uh, multimeter and pressure probe as part of that. Okay, so we are go right now uh, in my Cygnus Node 1 leak check activity up through 4.3, and that's a, that's a current go. We can start working on that now. That is affirmative, uh, and also we do need you to hold off on the CBCS removal, uh, obviously, as we're just starting to turn bolts. Absolutely. Figured you guys needed that one, and uh, we will get started on the Cygnus Node 1 leak check. Thank you. All four uh, ready-to-latch indicators are, are greenlit and ready to go to continue with the uh, first stage of berthing to the Cygnus cargo vehicle to the International Space Station. Uh, this lifts the constraint, uh, so there's no video communications needed to complete these next few steps. In the meantime, because of the delay, uh, Kay Rubens is working on some get-ahead tasks. The elite checks there were originally scheduled for 11 a.m. Central Time. She's getting a little bit of a head start on with these delays. We'll keep you updated on the first and second stage capture. Our first and second stages of berthing the Cygnus cargo vehicle to the International Space Station. Confirmation that first stage capture is underway.
Cygnus is now go for second stage capture. Second stage capture is now in progress. And that is con confirmation of second stage capture. Uh, the Cygnus cargo vehicle is now officially berthed to the International Space Station, 9.53 a.m. Central Time over the Indian Ocean. And the berthing of the Orbital ATK's Cygnus cargo vehicle on its 085 mission is now complete. Second stage capture confirmed, officially berthed to the International Space Station at 9.53 a.m. Central Time over the Indian Ocean.
The Cygnus cargo vehicle was captured this morning at 6.28 a.m. Central Time, 250 miles above Kyrgyzstan. This is after a long five-day rendezvous to the International Space Station after launching from uh, NASA Wallops Flight Facility on uh, Monday, uh, last week, October 17th at 6.45 p.m. That'll complete a great mission of Orbital ATK Cygnus cargo resupply mission to the International Space Station with two and a half tons of food supplies and experiments to deliver to the Expedition 49 crew and beyond. That'll wrap up, wrap up today's coverage of the capture and berthing of the Cygnus cargo vehicle to the International Space Station. This is Mission Control, Houston. Thank you.